I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with the University of Missouri Extension, and I'm excited to be with you here today to talk about elderberry production. This video is intended to be a tool for people who are considering getting into elderberry production, but it also contains useful information for those who are already growing this exciting and profitable crop. We'll be talking about first some introductory material, then we'll talk about choosing a good site for elderberry production. We'll spend a bit of time talking about elderberry cultivars, then we'll talk about propagation and planting establishment and elderberry cultural practices, and then we'll finish with harvest and post-harvest handling. And sprinkled throughout this presentation will be a number of videos to help highlight points. I'm excited to be sharing with you today an interview with Sherry Hagenhoff of Sac River Valley Elderberry and Elderflower Farm, a very innovative elderberry farm in Southwest Missouri. Let's take a look at and, and see what Sherry has to share with us. I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension, and I'm so excited mm -hmm. to be out here in an elderberry planting and to be interviewing one of the most innovative elderberry growers that I know, and that's Sherry Hagen. <laughs> Sherry, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about the, uh, the farm? Okay, hi, I'm Sherry Hagenhoff, and this is Sock River Valley Elderberry and Elderflower Farm. And we are um, just nestled literally on the Little Sock River. We've been here since 2015 is when we started preparing and planning. And uh, this is our third season for a good solid harvest. In the first season, to have everything in production that Excellent. we're harvesting. So, so how many plants do you have here? We have <laughs> roughly 2,800 plants. Okay. Now, elderberry is a relatively new crop for southwest Missouri, mm -hmm. and your farm is, is kind of leading the way as far as uh, showing the potential for this crop here, but what first got you interested in elderberry? Well, I actually had really significant improvements in my health by some of the things that I did and myself um, using other things besides elderberries, but I began to see the potential for eating right and doing the right things, and I started researching and I saw the potential for elderberry as um, not only a way for us to make a little money on our couple acres that we have available, but also just to provide something very healthy for our community and different, and we like a challenge. My husband and I are hard workers, so. Well, it certainly shows in what you've developed here in a relatively short period of time. So again, the farm's relatively young, but if you don't mind, kind of talk about the different cultivars you have here and uh, how the planting is laid out. Okay, well, the very first things that we planted to start with were Bob Gordon and ranch and a little bit of wildwood. We put out like 500 ranch plants to start, 350 Bob, Go Bob Gordon and 200 of wildwood. Um, that was our first plantings. We then, uh, 18 months ago, we also added Adams to that and we added Pocahontas, the newest and greatest. Mm -hmm. The newest and greatest. Yes, and so, um, so the, this is the second summer for the newest plants to be in production, mm -hmm. so. Very good, well, it, it's a, a nice mix of different cultivars. Mm -hmm. It gives you more of a spread out season. Mm -hmm. um, very good, so I, I'm curious, um, You've got the farm underway, you're harvesting elderberries, you're, you're in business in essence. What would you see as some of the challenges to growing elderberries here in Southwest Missouri? I think in the very beginning, um, it, it was the agriculture industry that would support us, providing what we needed. Um, we weren't sure all the things that we needed in the way of irrigation and um, prepping and um, just what materials we needed. So we really relied on NRCS. We really relied on the extension. Um, we relied on businesses that we were dealing with to educate us and to help us understand what we needed and try and, we had to learn how to describe what we needed. But so one was our agricultural suppliers um, communicating with them and just getting everything out there. Um, we could not just go up into Springfield, Missouri and get the products that we needed. We found out we had to literally go to certain places to get what we needed. Mm -hmm. Also, I think um, all along labor has always been an issue to find qualified people, um, people with the energy and the stamina. Mm -hmm. It's it's intense. Um, so finding people who could come and um, get 
get the job done and kind of make it a win-win situation where they were at least making some decent money, but also for us to be able to afford it. And, and uh, in the beginning, we did a lot more of the work ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, the machinery, you know, finding the machinery that would cut time and um, help with production as well. We slowly built up. We, we didn't go into a lot of debt, so we had to build up what supplies we had to, to process everything. Um, so I think that the labor, the machinery, and, and the ag industry supporting us, and um, I think those those were those really were the bigger yeah. ones. So tell me about how you market the crop. Okay, I was very transparent and very real, and just I call myself Sherry Plain and Small. From the very beginning, I just shared um, from my heart, this is our dream, and come along with us. And more and more and more people started following along and just kind of seeing from planting or, you know, putting out compost and tilling rows and putting in little sticks in the ground. And um, I've just really invited everybody to follow us. And, and as that grew, more and more people became aware of us. I literally have a Facebook page that I do that with, um, and I was still working at the time full time, so I, I just quit that last October. So it's been a nice, uh, hefty balance to try to get everything done. But um, I I'll, I post on Facebook when we have our berries available for sale. I post on um, Craigslist, and word of mouth has really grown for us. And we sell frozen destemmed washed berries. We I'm a DIY girl, and, and it appeals to me to try to provide. I thought if people are, are buying dried and imported berries, why wouldn't they want locally grown even more? And so for those DIY folks like myself, I've sold berries mm -hmm. to them and um, shown them how to make, I've done classes, how do you make products with those berries, and just shown them all the possibilities, so. Oh, that's excellent, that's excellent. So. You touched on a chord that I think is really important, and that's sort of developing community around a new crop like elderberry. And, and you know, through your Facebook presence, your, your social media presence, you've been very, um, you've been a leader, quite frankly, in uh -huh. helping develop elderberries here in Southwest Missouri. Do you want to comment on that? Well, we, I do network with area growers. Um, my husband and I know how painful it was to get started and learn everything. And so, as we would go to conferences at River Hills Harvest and work with you folks, um, we really reached out and, and hugged on to the folks that are nearby us so that we could provide them the support that we could. We also, um, we have workshops here for area farmers. Um, we just try to, we try to get everybody together so everybody knows what, what is available. Um, what they need to do. Many of them have come and done work days and worked here through the summer. We've ha we have had some out of state folks come and visit, but we're a, ni a nice tight knit community here in Southwest Missouri. We have a Southwest Missouri pod. We have a Facebook group for that. Um, we've just uh, tried to share knowledge. Everybody has something to contribute and that's, that's the wonderful thing. Um, everybody has something they know more about and so we give opportunities for people to speak up and share what they know and we've shared from our mistakes to our, our and our failures to our successes mm -hmm. and so. Well that, that's huge and I appreciate the role that you played in <laughs> helping grow our industry here in, in southwest Missouri. So what do you think the future looks like for Sac River elderberries? Uh, well, I've got to keep employees. <laughs> um, there's no way, like we have, we, essentially we have three acres. There is no way we could do all the work, the harvesting. And right now we, we hire folks mainly to help with harvesting and my husband and I do all the processing. I hope we will just continue to increase our volume of berries over time, but I also hope that we can continue also just to provide the, the frozen elderberries. We are starting to go into producing some um, added value market products, and um, so we'll get those out there and start pushing those out to the public. Um, but I, I hope we're here. This is a retirement thing for my mm -hmm. husband and I. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I quit working full-time in October. He's got a couple years, and he'll be able to back off of work. And mm -hmm. so um, hopefully it'll be an intense month of the year during harvest for us every year after this. And, and um, But I, I do hope 
that will be around and, and we can keep, it's cool when we can employ area youth and give them a job and their parents are all thrilled and love it that this is the kind of work they can find to do. They're all learning. Um, and I, I tell you, I can't say enough for just the community of people from our customers to our elderberry grower friends and, and around the world. I mean, we've had a visitor here from England. Um, we've had visitors here from, like I said, all different states, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Ohio. And um, we just hope that we can continue to share what we've learned and we just hope to continue to support the industry. Oh, that's fabulous. And, and people, of course, can follow your progress on your Facebook page. Yes, what, yes. What is the address of that? It's uh, Sock River Valley Elderberry and Elderflower Farm. Very and good. yeah, they're on Facebook. Well, thank so. you so much for, for joining me for the interview, uh -huh. Sherry. This has been fabulous. Thank you for sharing the, the story of Sack River Elderberry and El Elderflower Farm. Well, we're happy to do it, always. Thank, thank you. you. There are three species of elderberry that are of interest from the standpoint of commercial production. In the United States, the American elderberry is the native elderberry of the eastern part of the country. Uh, botanically, it's Sambucus nigra canadensis. Uh, the European or black elderberry is widespread in Europe and in Asia, Sambucus nigra. And the blue elderberry found along the uh, west coast of the United States, Sambucus nigra cerulea. The American elderberry is the elderberry of primary importance for the eastern U.S. This particular species of elderberry is found across much of Eastern North America from the Atlantic seaboard to the uh, Rocky Mountains and then from the Gulf Coast north into Canada. And in its native habitat, it forms a medium to large shrub to a small tree. It's prominent when it's flowering in June. And you can see in this slide, the uh, picture of the shrubs in, in blossom. They also produce clusters of dark purple black fruit. The leaves are pinnately compound and even during the dormant season, elderberry is easy to identify as the woody parts of the plant have these raised bumps on the twigs and branches called lettuces. The elderberry is of growing commercial interest. Uh, historically, elderberry was harvested primarily from wild plants and used to make jellies and jams. But in more recent years, we've seen a, not only a renewed interest in jellies and jams, but also interest in a variety of other products developed from both the flowers and the berries. These include, yes, jelly and jam, but also wine, beer, and spirits, health supplements, uh, and, and food colorants. In thinking about a good site for elderberry production, first of all, of course, consider marketing. Elderberry is a processing berry, and the markets are somewhat limited for this particular berry. So it's very important to consider the uh, marketing, potential marketing outlets for, for elderberry at the site. If the grower is interested in organic production, there may be some considerations that are unique to organic production. For example, uh, uh, neighboring land uses. Elderberry will need to be irrigated. So be sure that there is adequate irrigation of water, uh, first of all of quantity, but also of, of uh, the appropriate quality. Good elderberry sites are elevated relative to surrounding lands and consider the previous uses of the site. It'll be obviously less expensive to prepare a site that is in row crops or pastures for elderberry compared to a site that is in timber. Let's turn our attention to elderberry cultivars. Uh, historically, the uh, uh, improved elderberry development began with the work of William Adams in the 1920s in New York. And through his efforts, Adams I and Adams II were developed, and then later York, which was a cross of Adams II and another type of elderberry. Both of these types have been planted in Missouri. Both of these types have performed well. Another effort to develop improved elderberry cultivars took place in Kentville, Nova Scotia in the 50s and early 60s. And a number of cultivars were developed in that program, including Johns, Kent, Nova, Scotia, and Victoria. Recently, the University of Missouri and Missouri State University Elderberry Development Program has released a series of elderberries that are adapted to Midwestern production. And these include Bob Gordon and Wildwood, and um, more recently, Pocahontas. A cultivar called Ranch was also uh, released, uh, developed in this, uh, this program. If growers are interested in European elderberry uh, production, Hoshburg is the leading cultivar worldwide, but an adapted cultivar coming from the uh, Missouri Elderberry Development Program is Marge, released in 2013 and well suited for production in the Midwest. There are also a series of cultivars developed in Denmark that may have application in uh, North America. Elderberries are commonly propagated from hardwood cuttings. These cuttings typically are two to three nodes in length. They're collected while the plants are dormant, generally in January, or early February, 
and then the cuttings are stuck in early spring. Uh, they may be stuck into pots or they may be stuck directly into the soil. The next slide uh, and video will uh, illustrate the collection of dormant hardwood cuttings. Now let's turn our attention to elderberry establishment. And the first thing to consider is planting layout. An elderberry planting, of course, is a perennial planting. It's going to be here for a long time, and it's important to lay it out properly. Generally, the best elderberry sites are elevated sites above uh, lower ground, so the cold air moves off of the elderberry planting into other areas. When planning the actual layout of the planting, keep in mind that if you have several rows of plants, they should follow the contour of the slope. That way you reduce any possibility of erosion soil loss by having the plants running along the contour of the slope. And then when you lay out the rows themselves, keep in mind that the rows should be 10 to 12 feet apart, as we see in this planting here, and that the plants within the row should be two to four feet apart. Elderberries may be established from either bare root or container grown plants, as we see in this picture here. Uh, elderberries may also be, uh, elderberry plantings may also be developed by taking cuttings and directly sticking them into the soil. Again, as the uh, center photo and lower photo illustrate. Now let's discuss elderberry pruning. Pruning elderberries is pretty straightforward. In Missouri, many farmers are managing elderberries by cutting the plants back to the ground during the dormant season, which would typically be in January or February. And the plants respond by sending up strong shoots from the base of the plant or even from the crown of the plant, and these typically are unbranched. They grow up, uh, they're pretty much uniform in height, and each branch will be crowned with a cluster of flowers and eventually berries. The next topic to discuss is weed management in elderberry. Growers contemplating a new elderberry planting should be very conscious of weed management. The first step is to control problem weeds before you plant the elderberries, and particularly if you have weeds such as Bermuda grass, Johnson grass, poison ivy, wild blackberries, and, and, and other perennial troublesome weeds, eliminate those before you plant. Now with the planting in place, there are several things to consider. You typically have three zones of weed management to, to think about. The first is the area underneath the elderberry plants. The second is the area between the rows. And then the third is the interface between those two areas. So let's talk about the area between the rows first. Generally with elderberries, the area between the rows is maintained in some sort of permanent perennial crop. Uh, for example, a non-invasive grass could be used there. And then it's kept under control by mowing. The area under the plants, traditionally weeds were managed by using mulches, but increasingly growers are turning to the use of landscape fabric. This is a woven material that allows air and water to pass through it. It's durable enough that it will be in place generally for eight to 10 years, and it does a fabulous job of weed control. Now with this landscape fabric, it's important to open up an area for the elderberry plants to grow. And this is frequently done by actually burning a hole in the fabric. And then it's also important to have some sort of irrigation system to provide water to this area. But the combination of the, the weed barrier fabric and a small hole around each plant helps control weeds under the plants. The third area is the interface between the row middles and the area under the plants. And this area can be managed by using a selective herbicide, or it could be managed by using some sort of way of mowing the weeds that grow up at this interface. Elderberries will need supplemental irrigation during dry periods, and drip or trickle irrigation systems work well. Typically, a system includes 18 millimeter tubes with emitters every 18 to 24 inches, and an elderberry plant needs about an inch and a half to two inches of water per week. Elderberries are commonly irrigated with drip systems. This is a very efficient way to water a perennial plant like an elderberry. It puts the water exactly where the plant needs it, which is at the root system. 
It's also a, a, a more or less permanent installation. The uh, type of tubing that's used for a perennial crop like elderberry is generally related, rated for six to 10 years of life. Now this particular type of drip irrigation has the emitters molded into the line. Here's an emitter right here, here's an emitter right here. And they are at intervals down the line. Typically with elderberry, the interval between emitters will be 18 to 24 inches. And it's important when these are laid down that the emitters be facing up. The irrigation line can be placed on top of the landscape fabric as we see here, or it can be placed underneath the fabric. If it's on top, of course, it's easy to see and maintain. If it's underneath the fabric, it's actually protected to some degree from damage. Elderberries are heavy feeders from the standpoint of nitrogen, particularly if the plant is cut back to the ground annually. Uh, research and growers' experience suggests that 60 to 100 pounds of actual nitrogen per acre will be needed for plants on a 4 by 12 spacing. And this uh, fertilizer is typically applied in the spring as growth begins. Other nutrients may also be required. Uh, soil testing is recommended when establishing an elderberry planting to uh, supplement nutrients if necessary and at intervals during the, uh, the life of the planting to, to monitor nutrient status. Foliar sampling is another way to monitor uh, elderberry nutrition. Elderberries have several pests of consideration. Uh, first of all, aerified mite, as shown in the upper picture. This tiny mite can cause damage to the foliage and to the blossoms. The Japanese beetle, shown in the middle picture, feeds on the foliage and developing shoots of elderberry. And spotted winged drosophila is a problem in the berries as they begin to ripen. Information on managing these pests is available from the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry and also in the publication Growing and Marketing Elderberries in Missouri. Several diseases of consequence are present in Missouri. Bacterial leaf spot can cause purpling of the, the foliage and loss of leaves. Foma can cause shoot death and sometimes entire plant death. And elderberry rust can cause deformation of the uh, fruit stems, the, uh, the uh, uh, leaves and the uh, shoots of the elderberry. Again, management of these diseases, more information is found in the uh, publication Growing and Marketing Elderberries in Missouri. Deer are certainly a consideration for management of uh, elderberries and a planning should be established with deer management practices in place. These can range from electrified two wire fences all the way to substantial fences that include uh, woven wire, uh, electrified uh, strands and, and a height of six to eight feet. The elderberry blossom harvest takes place in June when the plants are in full flower. The uh, blossoms are harvested when all the florets in the cluster are open. The florets may be removed by rubbing over a screen or they can be snipped off from the clusters individually. The blossoms should be used immediately or they can be frozen for, uh, for later use or what is most common is that they are dried for future use. Elderberry harvest takes place in July and August in Missouri. And the plants are harvested, the berries are harvested when all the berries within the cluster are fully colored. Generally, there's two to three pickings for plants that have been pruned back to the ground. As elderberries ripen, they progress from green berries, as we see here, to eventually a dark purple black in color when the berries are ripe. Now, elderberries are commonly harvested using visual cues. In other words, all the berries within the umbel are fully colored. We can see in this umbel there's still a few green berries, and that's fine. This would still be at the point where it could be harvested. But increasingly, growers are using measurements of sugar content and acidity to help guide harvest decisions. At any rate, when the berries are ready to harvest, the entire syme is cut and then it's taken back for processing, typically destemming, and then the berries are are washed, sanitized, and then frozen. Elderberry yields build during the first three years of the plant's life. Uh, an expected yield in the year after planting is one pound of berries per plant. In the, uh, the uh, second year of production, three pounds of berries per plant, and the plants will be in mature yield by the uh, third to fourth year of production. This typically is five pounds of berries per plant. Uh, high yields in Missouri have been, been in the range of 10 pounds of berries per plant. Upon harvest, the fruit is destemmed. Here is the elderberry processing. So the harvest is time to brought in. You can see them in the log here. They're then destemmed. This is an example of a destemmer here. It has a 
screen on top to vibrate. The berries and the signs are moved around until all the berries have been sheared off by the movement of the screen. The berries then drop down and are caught below the center. Following destemming, the fruit is washed and sanitized. So now we're going to go through the process of sanitizing the berries. And we have a three bay sink set up. The uh, first dip will be into a sanitizing solution. Sherry's tested the concentration of the solution. She knows what it is. And then after that, the berries will move into two rinses and then they'll be brought out for draining. So these are the berries as they have come from the distemmer. Yes, they are. And uh, again, there's there's some green berries mixed in there. There's stems mixed in there. There may be some stink bugs mixed in there. Yeah, absolutely. And this step is really important because it helps separate the berries that don't make quality standards from the berries that do make quality standards. Yes, they sure do. I like to, this is just really about rinsing that bleach off and seeing what else wants to come to the top. I don't spend forever. Here. I really don't spend forever in the first sink either, but I'll pull these out now. It's shocking the amount of stem that could be in here, and I, I really drain super well here because I don't want to put water weight in my bags. My customers are paying for berries, not water. After the fruit has been destemmed, washed, and sanitized, it is typically stored. Elderberries can be stored for short periods of time as fresh berries, but are more commonly packaged and then frozen. Once the elderberry crop has been harvested, destemmed, sanitized, and cleaned, frequently the berries are held frozen for long periods of time until processing or until sales. Uh, an example here at Sac River Elderberry Farm, in a uh, deep freeze, the berries are he held here. They're packaged in gallon-sized bags, and then these berries are held at uh, temperatures between 0 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and they'll maintain their quality for at least two years if held continuously frozen. In-depth information on elderberry production and marketing is found in the publication Growing and Marketing Elderberries in Missouri. This is available from the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry at their website as a free downloadable PDF. For more information on elderberries, please feel free to reach out to Patrick Byers at the email and the telephone number here on the slide. I'd be very excited to share with you information on growing elderberries as a, a profitable and sustainable crop for Missouri. Mm -hmm.